We're going to sing the first and last verses of this song. It's called, Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Sing it with us. Oh beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties, dream that sees beyond the years thine alabaster cities gleam hunted by human tears This morning. We're going to turn to page 63 and please join and sing this with us. This is What a Day That Will Be. This is one of my favorites. I don't care if it's not yours, it's too bad. <laughs> and sing it like you mean it. I got a lot of favorites. There is coming a day. When no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day! Glorious 
sound good this morning, church. You may be seated. Thank you, ladies. Amen. Y'all give him a hand for leading us this morning. Amen. Oh. Appreciate that so much. I really do. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, it's so good to see each of you this beautiful Sunday morning. And I'll be able to take some time and hear some uh, praise reports and prayer requests. Brother Nick, can come forward. He just raise your hand. He'll bring the microphone out to you. I do want to wish um, today is Donna Moore's birthday. Yeah, right back there. Out of us a happy birthday. And I believe there's some others in here, too, coming along. And uh, we just, God bless you on your birthday. I yes. want to praise the Lord this morning for a wonderful week with my family. Amen. And um, we had probably about 10 or 15 at my house at one whack. Then we had our family reunion, and uh, that went well. Amen. But there's a lot of things that's going on within our family that I'm going to need some much wisdom to uh, talk to some people yeah. about and you know God tells us to be joyful in him yeah. and but I can also understand Jeremiah mm. <laughs> the weeping prophet I can, you know yeah. because mm. the more <clears throat> the closer you get to God the more sorrowful you are about all the things that's going on around you oh, yeah. and uh, I'd like some prayer in that also I'm going to have surgery sometime this week I'm not sure what okay. day yes, please right. pray for that Amen. And but but all in all, I am so thankful for the Lord in my life. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. One all the way down. He'll bring it around to you. Go ahead, Tina. Yeah. Uh, first of all, just uh, keep my grandkids in your prayers. They got sinus infections. Oh, I think they called them up at the Salem Fair. And uh, second, we got a lot of produce downstairs after church. If everybody don't mind going down there and getting all Go that downstairs. stuff today. And then the third thing, I thought it was really funny. When Thursday night, I think it was, we took the kids to the Salem Fair. And I guess since they passed that new law, girls and girls and all this stuff, oh, yeah. that's all you see walking through the Salem Fair. Mm. And Sophie and Caitlin, they don't mind speaking what they oh. want to yeah. say. And Caitlin, she said, looked at me and she was pulling on my shirt and she kept saying something. I said, Sophie, don't say nothing. <laughs> She said, Nana, out loud, so loud, everybody stopped. She said, look, she said, them two girls are holding hands and kissing, and that's not right. She said, she said the Bible says you can't marry another girl, because she's always joking and telling me, well, I marry her. Yeah, You know, nice just playing. <laughs> and then she said, we try to tell her, you know, in the Bible, according to the Bible, a right. girl can't marry a girl, you know. Mm -hmm. And she looked at them people, and she said, you can't be doing that. She said, a girl and a girl can't do that stuff. Read the Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I told her to Amen. leave one with me. He took, he took Haley on a ride, and I said, oh, my Lord, I'm going to get my tail beat and can't even fight him with two kids. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, she spoke up and said Amen. that. And I, I said, okay, you said your piece. Can we go eat now? And she, she shut up for a few minutes. <laughs> but she had to tell Lee the same thing. But that's all you've seen up at the same yeah. fair Thursday mm -hmm. night. And I it's thought sad. it was such a shame. It is. Especially around kids. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Well, bless her. Thank you, Tina. He's coming around. <laughs> yeah. Get Nikki a workout. Yeah, get Nikki a workout. <laughs> Amen. I want to give praise. Um, not only did we have company last weekend, we had a house full this weekend, yeah. Friday to yesterday. Oh, yeah. Christina and the kids and all came up. And my two beautiful nieces that are here from yes. Ohio that visiting. I haven't seen them since, what, last year, almost a year ago wow. when my dad died. Yeah. And their two children, but I just mm -hmm. want to praise God for all the miracles He's doing, and mm -hmm. you know all the um, goodness that's coming into my life. You know, mm -hmm. as I get older, this world has changed so much, and yes. I just feel blessed. I really yeah. do. Amen. Thank God you. bless you. Welcome to Virginia. Much different than Ohio, but it's a nice place too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just like to give praise to the Lord. I had a wonderful Fourth of July yesterday with my children, and we had a cookout, and then did fireworks last night, and. We just had a, a really, really wonderful time. Yeah. Um, I have a unspoken for Jessica and Robert, so if y'all would just keep them in prayer, please. Yes. And then with Jessica, um, she went to the doctor the other day, and they're changing up her medications because she's got those large cysts, some that's ruptured yeah. on her ovaries, and Plus she's so. in tremendous pain. Yeah. And they're switching up her medications, doing a few further tests, but 
I'm just you know, praying that the ultimate result is not going to be surgery. She's only 25, and that's yeah. not going to be a good thing for her yes, at that Lord. age. Yes, and I have mentioned this before, and I'm going to mention this again. Um, I have asked for a love offering for a very special person that's in this church. And the Lord has laid this on my heart to ask for this love offering for this person. And so far, I've only managed to raise $53. And God knows what the reason is, and God knows it is a very valid reason for us as a church to show our love for this person. So anyone that is willing to donate, um, I'd like to give, through Donna and I, to give this person the money the 1st of August. So, I mean, if you don't have it this week or next week, if you can, if you can and anybody listening by radio or watching by television, um, if you pray about it and you'd like to donate, um, you can send it to uh, crosscountryfm.com. Um, I can assure you that this is something that God has laid on my heart and it's something that's very deserving and I'd really appreciate any help and support that I could get. Thank you. Thank you, Sailor. Yes. I know that everybody in this church is going to be praying for this, but I declare, I just, and I think, I'm pretty sure that I heard it right, that they want to change the colors on our flag. Has anybody else heard that? Yeah, Mary, I figured you knew, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I don't want them to do that. I mean, they've already taken out little, so I call it the southern flag, because I'm just, the I'm southern, tickled yeah. to death to be from the south. You know, I love the south. So they took that away from us, and so now they're wanting to change the colors. I don't know. It was something about a light, a, um, the, I'm, well, I'm not going to say. Pride. <laughs> I'm, fr- I'm not like David. I ain't got the guts to say what he said sometimes. <laughs> but it's, it's like the uh, pastel colors, you know. Pride colors. You know. Colors what? of pride. I don't like pride. that. I mean, they're, they're changing too much of everything that, that is precious to us as Christians. Yeah. And uh, I just pray and pray and pray, and I ask all of y'all to please pray that this doesn't happen. That's, That's been right. our flag all ever since yeah. America came, you know. Amen. God made America. That's right. God blessed America. Yes. And, you know, I, I say this, and I say it really because it's the way I feel. Have you noticed that nothing hardly ever touches Virginia? And but, oh, you've noticed that too. You know, like mm. um, not very many hurricanes or tornadoes and stuff yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. I believe that Virginia is where God, what He started the United States of America, His United States mm-hmm. of America, and He protects us. Yeah. He protects us. Very seldom do we have anything really bad like that, like it's going on everywhere else. You know. Mm-hmm. And I may be wrong, but that's the way I feel about it. Give you something to think about, you know. Mm-hmm. I just think it's wonderful because of Jamestown and stuff like that. And that's where he sent them first, was in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm proud to be a Southern girl. I don't care what yeah. nobody says. Yeah. I love the South. Yeah. But I just pray that all of you all will pray, too, that they do not change our flag. Yeah. I mean, they're taking so much away from us and doing so much to us then we're fighting back as hard as we can, you know. And please don't let them take the flag. They'll they'll change the flag. It's just so beautiful the way it is. Yeah, it doesn't need to be changed. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Keep that in prayer. One Accord's going to share a song with you that I think is rather relevant for today and the times. And you all know this one. You've heard us sing it many times over the past few years. So please join in with us. Um... This song is called I've Got a Right to Pray. Amen. Right. Yeah. You can clap. Well, the king told Daniel not to pray to his God anymore. For I'll lock you in the lion's head and throw away the key to the door. Well, the very next day found Daniel down on his bed and knee. The whole wide world to see. He said, I don't care what you say. I'm gonna pray anyway. I'm gonna lift my hands up to the Lord for the things He's done for me. I just gotta get away, find a place to seek His face. I don't care what you say. I've got a right to pray. Well, we tell our children not 
to pray when they walk through the schoolhouse doors. According to the Constitution, you can't do that anymore. Well, I wonder what old Daniel would say if he were alive today. If the judge declared no more prayer, I believe old Daniel would say, Hey, I don't care what you say. I'm going to pray anyway. I'm going to lift my hands up to the Lord for the things he's done for me. I just got to get away, find a place to seek his face. I don't care what you say. I've got a right to pray. I don't care what you say. I'm going to pray anyway. I'm going to lift my hands up to the Lord for the things he's done for me. I just got to get away, find a place to seek his face. I don't care what you say, I've got a right to pray. I don't care what you say, I've got a right to pray. I don't, I don't care, I've got a right to pray. go to a patriotic church, do you? You don't at all. No, we haven't talked about politics or the flag or our rights, none of that. Well, uh, you're about to get a little more of that, I believe, as, as it goes reading. on. Amen. All right, I want us, uh, Brother Mike, get up and come forward. Got our scripture reading this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. I like that attitude. <laughs> but we do have a right to pray. Right now we do. As of right now we do. But they're trying to take that away from us too. That's coming a time, folks, I believe, when they're going to come right up in this church right here. Right after this man right here. Well, I got news for them. They're going to come in the wrong building and try, and try that today is all I can tell you. Because that's not going to happen, I can assure you. They're going to take everything away. They're trying to take everything we have away. Anything religious, they're saying bye-bye. Well, I'm saying no way. No, we are not going to do that either. I like that song. It says, we have a right to play. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say. This church, I know this church doesn't care what they say. Let them say what they want to say. But that day is coming, folks, and it's coming soon. This administration or this regime or whatever you want to call we got going up there in Washington right now is completely 100% corrupt. I mean, it's, it's darkness everywhere. They're doing all of their, all of their decisions are made in the dark of night. Y'all ought to notice that? Everything that's important is happening on Friday night, right before the weekend. Because they don't want us to know. When you cut the light on, roaches run. They run. And whenever that light is shined upon this regime up there, boy, they scatter like there's no tomorrow. Something's wrong in their country, folks. Something's wrong in their country big time. We all know it's coming. We all know it's coming. All you have to do is read this word right here. It's going to happen. Everything that we're experiencing, just like Diane says, just like everyone has spoke about the flag this morning, it's all coming. It's all coming. God's ways are not our ways. He's a much more superior being than we'll ever think of being. He, he made the heavens and the earth, hung the stars and the moon. You don't think he can handle this little problem we got down here? Barack Hussein Obama? He's not scared of Barack Hussein Obama. He could care less who Barack Hussein Obama is. But we got to live with him. Now we're going to have to make a decision this morning. Are we going with Barack Hussein Obama and that lovely bunch that he's got up there? Or are we going to follow Jesus Christ? and make a stand for Jesus this morning. 
Because that's what it comes down to, folks. It's coming down to, it's coming down when you break this completely down, there's going to be a right and there's definitely going to be a wrong. Right now, it's like this. Right is wrong, wrong is right. The world's upside down, but it said so right here in this book. It's exactly what's going to happen. Isn't it, isn't it awesome that we're amazing? I mean, we're witnessing this today. I used to think about this back when I was younger, and I was going, oh, well, yeah. this is way, way down the road right here. I'll never see any of this. I hope none of my true. I hope nobody has to. That's the way I thought as a human being. I, I say, bring it on. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. We need him today more than ever. Our country was formed on the word. They planted a cross on the beach. He says we're not a Christian nation anymore. Well, I say it's hogwash. He's not a Christian anymore. I don't think he's ever been at all. I don't think there's anyone up there with him that is one, because I haven't heard any of them speak of it. I haven't heard anything moral or gospel or anything come from that regime up there. Nothing but darkness and mostly filth. I'm sorry to say it, but when I see my White House lit up like a rainbow, that is 100% filth in this nation. And we've had enough of it. I've had enough of it. These people are going to start standing. I know a lot of folks out here right now that are madder than Hades right now. They would storm that White House today. But there's more and there's more, and there's more, and you're gonna keep pushing up, up us in, into this corner right here, so we're gonna strike back. Our nation was founded that way. We've been through wars before. We're not gonna, I, I can tell you people, we're not gonna sit back here this morning and let them stomp over top of our religious rights. That's not gonna happen. I know the people that I'm with, it's not gonna happen. I can assure you of that. But we've got to stand. Every single one of us have to stand up and, and, and remember where we come from. This book is the only book that matters in America today. It's the number one seller. Always has been, always will be. I had a friend of mine tell me not long ago, well, Mike, that's an old book. Yeah, it's real old, but it's still the number one seller, and they sell them every day. This book right here has pulled people from the clutches of hell and saved them. We've got to stand, folks. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. There's going to be bloodshed in our nation. I hate to say it, but I know it's coming. It's coming. Because I'm not going to lay down and let this happen. I, 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 just, like, just like all of our forefathers, all the people before us, I, I think of the people that had to stand with a whole lot less than what we ever have had. I mean, they, they didn't have anything. They didn't have food to eat, clothes to wear. They didn't have anything, but they stood for this nation. If it hadn't have been for them folks, we would not be here today. And they did it on little bits. Man, we got so much. God has blessed us so much with so much. We have so much to be thankful for. And I am thankful. I am thankful. But there's coming a time when you're going to have to make a choice. And it's coming real, real soon. Sooner than anyone in this building has an idea. Because I have a real funny feeling that this man's not going to leave this office until he does everything he said he was going to do. And he's got a lot to go. People keep saying, well, we don't have a year and a half. In a year and a half time, this man can change everything in this nation. And he's doing it with a stroke of a pen. Unconstitutional. He's stomping all over the Constitution. All of that trash up there stomp, stomping all over our Constitution and our Bible. And I'm not going to take it. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm standing, and every time I have something come against me, I have been called so many names out here in the street, people you would not believe. There's a lot of lost people out here. I don't claim to be the best person in the world. I'm not by a long shot. But I do know 
that this right here is going to be the answer. There's no other answer for us. We don't care, we don't care who we elect up at. All of them are just about as corrupt as the other. Now, I will say this. I'm hoping that the conservatives can get back in touch. But there are just as many progressive conservatives as there are liberals. So our whole nation is turning. It's just turning like that. We got to make a move. I just feel like sometime I, I just could just explode. You know, I just stand here, not up here so much, but just in everyday life, I talk to people and they're so ignorant. I mean, I don't know of any other place to put it except it's just ignorance. I don't think it's stupid because I think they can be taught, but there's a lot of ignorance out here. Oh my Lord. I mean, people think that they're saved and they quote me stuff out of this all the time and I go, that's not right. What you're saying is not right. They're trying to make the world, what's going on right now with all this same-sex marriage, abortion, all the evil stuff that's going on, they're trying to say that God says it's okay. I had a man tell me the other day that God said it was okay. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says anything about homosexuality at all. Nothing. I mean, you've never read the Bible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry as I can be. But it's coming. It's coming. I'm going to read today Psalms 57. All rise for the reading of his word. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of the wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among the lions, and I lie even among them that are set free, that are set on fire. Even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue, tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst of whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory, awake. Psaltery and harp, I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto the nations, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, that thy glory be above all the earth. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. We're going to be looking in just a few minutes in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9 and starting with verse number 3. On Friday night, uh, Don and I were in Williamsburg. And we went to see what they call a program called the Stars and Stripes. And at about 9.30 that night, they put on patriotic music and they put on quotes from founding fathers and someone read over the, the whole park up there the preamble to the Constitution and they, they had all of these fireworks and they were very, very beautiful. But something didn't quite feel right while we were there and the, the mood was a bit somber. Well, I thought maybe it was just me and so last night we went to VMI in Lexington where about another 5,000 people or more were gathered to watch the fireworks. And although it was a beautiful show, and they even played the Star Spangled Banner and all, you could have heard a pin drop up there when they were shooting the fireworks. It was a very, very somber atmosphere. It, it, it seems like many people have lost their fervor in this country. And the reason why, and there's no need to lie about it, based on everything that I have seen from the Word of God, America is sitting on death row. It is sitting on death row waiting for the hammer to fall. We are very much like 
the city of Nineveh. And if you want to read about that, look in the book of Jonah. And, and, and um, Jonah's only job was to walk into the city and preach this one sermon, and it's this. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the reason that God sent Jonah to preach against Nineveh was they were doing the exact same things that we are doing in this country right now. But there was a twist to it. When Jonah walked into the uh, city and he said he walked about 20 miles into the city and started preaching, people started to listen. And it said that people started to repent everywhere and all of a sudden the king got up off of his throne and he put on sackcloth and sat in ashes and made them even cover the cattle and nobody could eat or drink anything until they cried out to God and got right with God and God spared the city for more than 40 days. Did it get destroyed? Yes. Soon Nineveh was utterly destroyed right to the ground to where there was nothing left and it never was resurrected after that. But God spared the people for even actually a number of years because they cried out to God. And so having said that, today's message are the four R's for America. Number one is repentance. Number two is revival. Number three is revolution. And number four is return. But none of this can ever happen. Nothing can be accomplished for God outside of number one, and which is the most important of all of them, and that is repentance. And in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 3, the great prophet Daniel said, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I remember back years ago, there was a movement in America called the Promise Keepers. And it was manned by millions of men who promised to be, to do right by their wives, to do right by God, and to live a holy life. And it was a movement the likes of which I have never seen in America in many, many years. I went to Washington, D.C., to the mall and there was one and a half million men that got on their face before God and was praying for forgiveness of their sins and praying that they could be the right kind of family men. And it was an amazing thing to see. And when we drove into Washington, D.C. and was going near the mall, there was a large group of preachers that were all dressed in sackcloth. And that was a sight to see. And just like Daniel said, we need... We need some more shame in this country. Right now, there is no shame. We need some old-fashioned fear of God. People live today like there isn't a God. And even those that claim to know Him don't fear Him anymore. We need to stop thinking of ourselves and we need to start crying out to God for our sins and for the sins of other people. We need some fasting, we need some sackcloth, and we need some ashes to sit in. Daniel said, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and we have committed iniquity and we have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. As a nation, and even as a body of Christ in this nation, we have sinned. We have committed iniquity. The church has joined in with the world, doing the same things that the world is doing. And we wonder why nobody wants to be like us, and why nobody wants to come to our churches no more. Because what's the difference except getting up on Sunday morning? What's the difference? We need to be able to show the world that there is something different about us, something that they, if they need a change, they know where to really go and get it. I remember a long time ago, one Wednesday night, we were having services over at the school and the, the cafeteria was full. And it turned into a confession session. All of a sudden, everybody was standing in line to come up to the mic and confess their sins before everybody. And let me tell you what a stretch that was. 
That was a scary thing because these people were confessing all kinds of things and just getting it right out in the open and people were coming out of their seats and gathering around them and praying with them. And it even got to the point to where people were remembering folks that they had done wrong or said something wrong to and people were leaving out of the service going to get in their cars to go and make it right with their neighbors and with their loved ones. That was an amazing service and we need a confession session again. He said, neither have we listened to your servants, the prophets, which spoke in, your, in, in thy name to our kings and our princes and our fathers and all the people of the land. Right now, pastors and evangelists and all are nothing but a laughing stock. And people mock them and people make fun of them. And people said, we don't need to be listening to no preacher. And as a result, they're following anything but the man of God, the woman of God. And look at the mess that they have walked into. Daniel con continues his prayer, O oh Lord, righteousness belongs unto you, but unto us confusion of faces as to this day. To the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all of Israel, they are near and that are far off through all countries where you have driven them because of their trespass. They have trespassed against you. O oh Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, and to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. I have never seen so much confusion as I have seen in churches today. People don't even know what is right from wrong even in the churches today. It's almost like they've never listened or, or maybe their pastor is using the Reader's Digest condensed Bible or whatever to preach from, but they don't even know what is right and what is wrong anymore. That's right. I'm going to ring these things real good. I don't know which one it is, but I'm going to keep on till they're all ringing. Confusion of faith. We are literally walking around with a confusion of, of faith today because we have not listened to the word of God. Neither have we obeyed the voice of our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. I can't begin to tell you how many times somebody will come to me and they will openly tell me that they have defied the word of God and they can't understand why their life is in the toilet. Duh! Anybody hear that? You don't do what God tells you to do and it's not going to work. It's never going to work. We need to start listening to the word of God. We need to start paying attention to what is being preached from the pulpits. Then the prophet Ezra has a few things to say about repentance. In Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5, he says, Then at the evening sacrifice I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and cloak torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord my God. And I prayed, Oh my God, I am too ashamed and disgraced to lift up my face to you, O God, because our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heavens from the days of our forefathers till now our guilt has been great because of our sins we and our kings and our priests have been subjected uh, to the sword and captivity to pillage and humiliation at the hand of foreign kings as it is today boy that's timely how timely could that possibly be that the church not the world the church needs to search itself because of its sinful activity. And nothing will ever be right in this land until the church gets right. The church is playing with sin. The church is piddling with sin and walking around with hidden sins. And how in the world are you going to tell anybody else about theirs? How in the world are you going to reach anybody else for their sins when you've got it in your own life? There is no way in the world that you'll ever reach anybody doing that. Ezra said he, he spread his hands out to God and said, Oh my God, I'm too ashamed. When people are walking around with their nose in the air and they believe that they're better than everyone else. I had somebody bragging to me one time and it said, Well, so and so, they commit sins that will send them to hell. I only commit the ones that won't. 
<laughs> think we need to get a harump for that one, don't we? I have never in my life seen such ignorance. We need the fires of revival to ignite in our heart and then spread across this country. David said in Psalms 80, Turn us again, O Lord, God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. We need to be turned around from where we are going if we are to be revived. And he says, Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Isaiah said, For thus saith the Lord, the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. God is never going to revive anybody until they humble themselves before him. Quit walking around like a rooster. And start bowing before God and confessing your sins before God. And know that you are completely undone without him. James said in chapter 4 verse 8, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. People need to start searching through their lives and find out what it is that is keeping them from a complete walk with God and get rid of it. Don't ask God, how many sins can I commit and still go to heaven? Ask him, where are the sins in my life and get rid of them? Help me get rid of them. I want to walk pure and I want to walk holy before you. But until the church does that, there will be no revival and more freedoms and more freedoms and more rights in this country are going to be handed to the communists and handed to the Muslims and handed to the devil until the church gets right with God. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2, his prayer is, O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years and in the midst of the years make known and in wrath remember mercy. God's wrath is coming upon this country. Make no mistake about it, but we need to start asking for mercy first. And mercy now before the wrath comes. And God is able to grant it, but he's only going to grant it to those that ask for it. Ephesians 5, 4, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. If anybody has been asleep at the wheel, it's the pastors of the churches. I have never seen anything quite like that. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're teaching. I don't know what they're preaching. But they are not producing disciples. They're producing people that are sound asleep. I guess they're singing them a lullaby on Sunday morning. Psalms 22, 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before you. And then David went on to say in Psalms 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Our hearts need to be cleansed. And the only way to do that is to confess them before God and walk away. Somebody told me the other day, I sin the same sin every single day, but I always ask him for forgiveness before I go to sleep at night. That is the most stupid thing I have ever heard in my life. That does not give you a license to go back tomorrow and do the same thing all over again when you supposedly ask forgiveness the night before. Jesus says, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. We need to stop doing it and thinking, well, let me see now. I did this, 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 this. I'm going to ask him for forgiveness for that. And then tomorrow, I plan to go back and do it all over again. You didn't get forgiveness. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What do we need for revival? Peter said this in front of a large crowd of people, repent 
therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Repent and be converted. If you have never been saved, if you've never been born again, that's the first thing you need to do. You need to be saved and born again and converted. And you can get that by repenting of your sins and walking away from them and accepting Christ as your Savior. And once that happens, revival can begin. Well, if we have repentance and if we have revival in this land, you can bet there's going to be a revolution. There are many people calling for a, a, an armed revolution. That may happen. That may happen. Because it is, this, this government has violated the Constitution to the point that that may be the only thing that will get them out from down there. But let me tell you this. If this nation was to get right with God, it wouldn't, you wouldn't even have to fire a shot. They'd all be jumping in boats and heading across the Rappahannock River to get away from everybody. They would. But this nation needs to get right with God. And George Washington, the father of our country, said of all the dispositions and habits that lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would that man claim the tribute of patriotism who should labor to subvert these great pillars of human happiness. The mere politician, equally with the pious man, ought to respect and cherish them. Then it said our ancestors established their system of government on morality and religious sentiment. Daniel Webster said that our ancestors established their system of government on morality. Not freedom to commit immorality, but morality. That's what holds this nation together and it's starting to unravel fast because of all the morality that's going on in this nation. Moral habits, he said, they, they believe cannot safely be entrusted on any other foundation than religious principle. Not any government secure which is not supported by moral habit, habits. Whatever makes men good Christians makes them good citizens. And then my favorite patriot of all time, Patrick Henry said it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists but by Christians. Not on religions but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this very reason peoples of other faiths have been afforded asylum, prosperity and freedom of worship here. Patrick Henry said that. John Quincy Adams, and I'll finish this part with his quote, the highest glory of the American Revolution was this, it connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. So I don't care what any of these idiot historians say today about how this country was founded, here is the quote from the ones that did it. And they said it was founded on Christianity and it needs to get back to Christianity through whatever revolution we got to have. But we need repentance and we need revival before we can ever get back to anything or else we'll keep putting the same morons up there that we got now. The, this country has got to get right with God. Then finally, once we do that, we have the opportunity to return to the way that we're supposed to be. Isaiah 44, 22 said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud your transgressions and as a cloud of your, your sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed you. If you are saved, you've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and you need to return to his teachings and his tenets. Jeremiah 4, 1, if you will return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, and if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. There are some abominations committed in this country that's got to go before we can ever return to anything. Don't ever say we've returned back to the teachings of God and the teachings of the Bible when we are allowing abominations to continue going on in this country. It is not up to somebody 
to that you're going to vote for. It's up to you to do something about it, to stand up and speak against it. Jeremiah 24 said, I'll give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. I have sent... Also unto you, my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return you now, every man, from his evil way and amend your doings and go not after other gods to serve them. And you will dwell in the land which I have given you and your fathers, but you have not listened to me nor hearkened unto me. If we are going to return, we've got to listen to God and quit listening to everybody else's voice. Thus saith the Lord, stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. Let me read that one more time. This is what you need to ask for. You need to get right with God. You need to repent. You need to be revived. And then you need to say, thus saith the Lord, stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls? What are the old paths? Anybody ever been walking in the mountains before? And you see an old path that was used there. Years ago I would take my dad up there when he was able to walk any distance and he told me that he'd take this path and go all the way across the mountain to another little village up there and he said you could always count on it it would get you there the old past and it wasn't anything like the big road we don't need anything new people we don't need any kind of new way to figure or to get back to God or anything we need to go back to the old paths we need to go back to our roots let me say this we don't need any more Baptists we need John the Baptist. That's the Baptist that we need. We don't need any more Methodists. We need the Wesley brothers to show back up again and preach revival. A lot of people don't know about the Methodist church. You think they're all meek and mild and calm and nice and, and they just make Methodist pie and all that type of stuff. Let me tell you something about the Methodists of old. They were founded by John and Charles Wesley and they were so powerful, they were so anointed that other churches wouldn't even let them in the pulpits. They had to go out in the fields and preach and upwards of 20,000 people would show up and the revivals were so powerful it said people were falling over under conviction like they were mowed down by cannon fire. That's the kind of Methodist that we need. We don't need any more Episcopalians. We need, we need George Whitefield, the greatest Episcopalian evangelist that ever lived. They said he had a booming voice that was so powerful that he could preach without a sound system to 15,000 people and they could hear him. And he preached repentance. We don't need any more Pentecostals. We just need another Azusa Street is what we need. We, don't, we need more of Jonathan Edwards. We need more C.H. Spurgeon's, Charles Finney's, Billy Sunday's, and D.L. Moody's. We need people that's going to return to preaching the Word of God and holding nothing back. I'm sick of the compromise. I'm sick of the, the milk toast sop and lip wrist preachers that we've got behind the pulpits today that don't have a backbone that are so worried that Mr. Moneybags won't plunk down enough in the plate to keep the church going. Well, if it closes, it closes. So be it. But the word is going to get preached. When they gave me this Bible two years ago in October, that was a sacred trust. My old one had completely fallen apart. I miss it because I had everything marked in it. But, but I'm going to use this one, and I promise you I'll never swing it the wrong way. I'll never misuse it for dishonest gain. I'm always going to tell you what it says, whether it feels good or not. We need a return to righteous living. And we need to get off the broad street and go back to the old paths. And one of the best old paths that I know of 
would be to start off by kneeling in front of this altar today. Folks, you, only you know your heart. Only you know. And if there's something between you and God, you need to come down and talk to him about it. And if you need to get somebody to pray with you, there will be people to pray with you. If you've never been saved, we invite you to come down and find out what it is like to be saved. And to walk out of here a new creature. But if nothing else, I invite you to come and pray for your country while you still can. Because next week we might be in the woods praying for our country and not in here. It's happening faster than you can possibly imagine. And if we don't start praying, we're not going to have anywhere to go and pray. Shall we stand?